Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Prince Harry's recent appearance at the Better Up Uplift Summit in San Francisco has left some fans disappointed as his session on managing the pressures of today's world and modern corporate life was not live streamed, despite the event charging $1,600 for in person tickets. Harry, who serves as Better Up's chief impact officer, was listed as a speaker at the summit, but the specific details of his attendance were not provided in advance. Fans only learned about his session after a post on his website, sussex.com, which was accompanied by four photos, including one of him with actress Mindy Kaling from the US version of The Office. Kaling, who appeared on Meghan Markle's $25 million Spotify podcast series, Archetypes had her own session at the summit, which was advertised and live streamed. Harry's appearance, on the other hand, was not publicized in the same way, drawing comparisons to David Brent's cringeworthy motivational speech in the UK's original The Office. During the Beyond Burnout session, Harry was joined by Dr. Adam Grant, Better Up's chairman of the Centre for Purpose and Performance, and Kelly Jones, chief people officer at technology firm Cisco. While no video footage has been released, Sussex.com referred to the chat as insightful. Fans had discussed Harry's appearance in advance, noting the lack of clarity in the schedule. Some expressed disappointment at not being able to see the Duke speak, despite the high cost of in-person tickets. Kaling also spoke at the summit, discussing her thoughts on gentle parenting and how she is reconsidering the approach with her own children. Harry has been with Better Up since March 2021 and has spoken openly about his own mental health struggles. However, his role at the company has faced some criticism, with reports suggesting that staff had questioned his position and feared his ongoing dramas might impact the company's reputation. Royal author Tom Quinn believes Meghan Markle is beginning to feel uncomfortable with her life in Montecito. Quinn told The Mirror, Megan's new brand, American Riviera Orchard, has already proved popular with more than half a million followers, but it is really just a relaunch of the TIG, the brand she ditched when she married Harry and thought that, as a royal princess, life would be endless deference and untold riches. We don't yet know exactly what the new brand will be selling, but it's astonishing that a royal prince and his wife have been reduced to selling some of the things we have already been told they will be selling, marmalades, jams, and even dog shampoo. The new enterprise and Meghan's widely publicised visit to the children's home in Los Angeles are definitely linked and suggest that the couple are beginning to feel uncomfortable sitting around in Montecito with not very much to do. Royal insider Deep Crown added, The idea that Meghan may be growing bored with life in Montecito is not entirely surprising, given her dynamic personality and the stark contrast between her current lifestyle and her previous roles as an actress and working royal. It's a far cry from the hustle and bustle of London or the glamour of Hollywood, and I can imagine it might feel a bit stifling at times. However, my heart goes out to Prince Harry in this situation. He has made such significant sacrifices to build a life with Meghan and their children. Stepping back from his royal duties and leaving behind the only life he's ever known, he's navigated this uncharted territory with admirable determination. But I can't help but wonder if he's truly content with the way things have unfolded. Harry has always been a free spirit, but he's also deeply loyal to his family and his country. The rift with his brother Prince William and the rest of the royal family must weigh heavily on him, even if he puts on a brave face. And now, if Meghan is indeed feeling restless in their new life, it puts him in a difficult position. He wants nothing more than his wife to be happy and fulfilled, but he also has his own needs and desires to consider. It's a delicate balancing act, and I can only imagine the internal struggle he must be going through. I do hope that Harry and Meghan can find a way to make their life in Montecito work, or perhaps find a new path that brings them both joy and purpose. They've already weathered so many storms together, and I have no doubt that their love for each other will continue to be a source of strength. But it's a reminder that even the most fairy tale romances have their challenges and that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Harry and Meghan have chosen a different path and now they must navigate the consequences of that choice for better or for worse. My thoughts are with them both during this challenging time. Tom Quinn also suggested that while William and Kate are keen on reconciling with Harry and Meghan, Meghan isn't quite ready to bury the hatchet. Quinn told The Mirror Harry would like a reconciliation but supports his wife completely and until she feels that the royal family have been sufficiently nice to her and grovelingly apologised for the past, it's not going to happen. 
Mr. Queen even suggested that Meghan is blocking Harry from engaging in peace talks with Kate and William, forming a barrier that prevents her husband from reaching out with an olive branch, even after Kate's cancer diagnosis. Quinn said, There's been a shift here since Kate's illness. Harry and Meghan do feel that they need to extend an olive branch, but Meghan's sense of grievance is still preventing anything really meaningful happening. Illness often brings warring families together, and there have been hopes at Kensington Palace that Kate's illness might do it. There is no way Meghan would bring the children to the UK. William and Kate have suggested that Meghan and Harry bring the kids and that the two couples and their families try to make up, but the suggestion is not leading anywhere so far. Former royal butler Grant Harold believes it is very likely that Harry and William will see each other next month and anything is possible. The king will want the brothers to patch things up, so it's more than likely that he could play peacemaker. A source told the Mirror, Harry's first priority when he comes to England is to see his sick dad. It will be his first port of call when he comes off the plane to try and spend as much time with King Charles so they can build bridges and enjoy each other's company like before. Harry knows it will be awkward, but it's time to put pride and differences to one side. He is coming over for his charity work, which is so important to him, so he will juggle his schedule accordingly, but seeing his dad will come first. He wants the family to get back to the way they were and is going to be making extra effort with his brother Wills too, as difficult as it may be. Now more than ever, with Kate's cancer diagnosis too, Harry wants them to know he is there for them. Palace Intrigue will be right back. A royal source has denied that a Buckingham Palace official put pressure on the Welsh government to stop the king from being criminally liable under a new law. Despite the Guardian alleging a courtier demanded assurances, His Majesty would not be prosecuted under last year's Agricultural Wales Act when it was being drawn up. No objections were made by the Welsh government and the Buckingham Palace official was understood to be simply checking correct procedure was being followed. A Welsh government spokesperson told GB News, the immunity of the monarch from prosecution is a long-established principle. Prince William reportedly enjoyed a low-key visit to a pub in North Norfolk over the weekend, accompanied by his mother-in-law, Carol Middleton. The outing occurred as Kate and William spend the Easter break with their children. According to the Daily Mail's Richard Eden column, a pub customer reported the prince's visit, stating, it was all very low-key with no great fanfare. He just walked in and through the pub, he appeared to be with Carol Middleton. However, Kate reportedly did not join them. Kensington Palace declined to comment on the matter. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice, and give us a review or five stars if you like the show. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. <laughs>